can you use Canvas stock videos within your YouTube videos? This is a very, very simple question. The answer isn't as simple as yes or no. I do want to remind you that I'm not a lawyer. This is not legal advice. You need to dive into the licensing agreement that you signed when you signed up for Canva. I'm going to leave a few links in the description below that are going to be underneath the segment that say important links. Now let's ask again, can you use videos on your YouTube channel that you got from Canva? The short answer is yes, you can use them. However, you don't want to use them as a standalone video. You don't want to do that because you will get in trouble, even if you don't right away, you will get in trouble on YouTube for something called reused content. And this is really, really important, especially if you're trying to get into the YouTube partner program. You do not want them to come at you and say, oh, you've got reused content. If all of your footage is somebody else's footage, like you didn't shoot it yourself, YouTube is going to come at you hard for reused content. And you're probably going to get copyright claims, copyright strikes from these companies that have actually shot these videos. So you definitely do not want to use them as a standalone asset within your YouTube channel. I say all that you can use the videos within your videos. And the key phrase that you need to think about is transformative. Is that B roll going to transform your video in some way to make it better? And are you transforming the video that you got from Canva in some way to make it better? Let me give you a few examples of what I do with the B roll that I get from Canva. And then after that, I'm going to tell you why you can't just download one video and use it over and over and over and over and over again within your videos. There's a way around that, but you need to keep watching to find out what that is. I don't know why my hands go crazy when I'm teaching. How many steps do you think I'm going to take standing in place while filming this tutorial? Leave that in the comments and I will tell you at the end what my Fitbit says. Canva question of the day. Do you use Canva stock footage for your YouTube videos? Let me know in the comments below. How do I transform the videos? Well, I do a couple different things. One of my favorite techniques is to add a gradient overlay on top of the videos. Essentially, what I will do is take a rectangle. So I type R and it will bring up a square and then I size that square across the video that I want to transform. I add a gradient to it. Sometimes I use the pre-made gradients that are within Canva themselves and sometimes I do a custom gradient. If you want more information on how to create a custom gradient, then what you're going to want to do is check out the description. I will leave one of my custom gradient tutorials in there for you. I will use the transparency button on that gradient and reduce it just a little bit to give that video just a slightly different look. The other thing that I might do with or without the gradient is change the video itself by clicking edit video. When I click edit video, what I will do is add a filter. I might just use the adjust button and do something like that. Sometimes if there's a main person on screen, I might remove the background and then layer up. There's a whole bunch of different techniques that you can do that will make the video just a little bit different than just your standard stock footage. And that's what I like to do. The other thing I will do is if it's a 30 second video, I will reduce it to the segment that I think is the best. And I'll use the edit scissors button up here at the top where it's got the time, it's got a little scissors, I'll click the scissors and then I will trim from the front and the back and then move it where I think I want it to be. Typically, I will leave it a little longer than I think it needs to be because I do use an external editor for editing my videos. 
And I do that because I'm much faster in an external editing program and that editor does not require internet. So I'm not tied down by the bounds of what's going on with my internet that day. After I transform the video, I will download it. I mentioned a little bit earlier, you can't just download something one time and expect to be able to use it in every single video you do from then on out. That's not the way it works. It's a one-time use license for the one video that you're making. There's a couple ways that I work around that. And that's, I do download it multiple times, but I put the videos when I find them, as soon as I look at it on the left-hand panel, and I think, oh, this might be a video that I wanna use repeatedly, I'll go ahead and put it in a folder or I will star it if that's an option as well. That way I can find those videos later. The other thing that I like to do is create what I call a B-roll project file where I will put a whole bunch of different videos within that file and then I can pull from that video document into a new one for my next video. That's just a little tip for you so that you can find the same video over and over and over again, especially if you really like that footage. Video that I use, I do download it each time I want to use it because I would rather be safe than sorry. When you're downloading videos within Canva, here's the thing. You might not want to download 20 to 30 videos for your B-roll because it's so time consuming. What you wanna do is watch this video next to show you a new feature that Canva's just unveiled that's gonna make your downloading process go much faster. 2,027 steps. That's how much I use my hands.